After 10 years of working with CNC vacuum tables, ranging from hobbyist ones like this, all the way up to industrial level vacuums, I have learned a ton along the way. So in today's video, I'm going over the pros and cons of vacuum tables and are they worth it for you? So my hope is by the end of this video, you know everything there is to know about vacuum tables and if you're willing to make the jump to upgrade to it or if it's actually not worth it for your situation. Let's get right into it. So in a nutshell, how do vacuum tables work? This air weight system is a really good representation and believe it or not, it's exactly the same as this machine, as that machine, and my other machine that have vacuum tables. So more or less how this works, you have a motor that's gonna suck air and it's gonna suck air through the table, through this grid system, and then hold down your material. So to give context, grid system, motor. Behind the CNC is a motor. And now you have a grid system. Okay, they both work the same. And so air is then pumped from the vacuum and sucked in from the vacuum, which is called, it's pulling a vacuum. And then typically you have some kind of a sacrificial board on top. We call this a spoil board. The air sucks through the spoil board and holds down your material. This spoil board right here and into your material. That is how pretty much all vacuum tables work. So you really just need a motor, some kind of a line to create suction on the table and then typically a grid pattern so the air can flow. They're relatively simple machines, but there's a lot of different dynamics that you learn. So now let's get into the pros and cons. So the first pro we're gonna get into on why you'd want a vacuum table is pretty basic and straightforward. You don't have to use clamps. So you can take a piece like this, this is Bamex. You can stick it on, right? You click on with the vacuum table and now this material is held down. Nothing crazy there. It'd be the same context as putting this on here and also sucking it down. Once again, motor sucking air into grid table, holding down material. Now, where this gets a little bit much, and I, I wanna say this, I didn't say it earlier, you wanna make sure you are maximizing the amount of air that is getting locked in and trapped inside and sucking down the material. So that is really key. I'm gonna go back to it multiple different times during this video, but you are trying to maximize the amount of air sucking the material down and not escaping outwards in any other direction. So very, very critical. Now let's go to the very first con. So the first con with this is that most vacuum tables aren't really good for one-offs because you don't have T-slots a lot of the times, right? Like this is, there's no T-slots on this vacuum table. There's some on this corner and stuff like that. Because there's no T-slots, it's not really easy to hold like oblong shapes. So let's just say you have a random project like this right here and you wanna hold it down on a vacuum table. Well, even on my industrial machines, I have to then cover everything else and find a spot where this thing is not going to move. Vice versa on this air weight right here, I'm gonna have to do the same thing. Either I have that spoil board on here with tile gasketing or I'm gonna have to take this other stuff and move it around and really like do a whole entire setup just to cut out this one-off piece. Now there's other ways you get around it, but more or less vacuum tables aren't good for one-offs. And so if you do, you know, 20 different CNC projects in a weekend and they're all different shapes and sizes, a vacuum table is not the best answer for that or you're gonna have to figure out some kind of a system to be able to do those one-offs over and over again. So I hope that's making sense because that's a huge con that we have where we can't just slap this random piece of wood once again on this thing, hold it down and click go. See how it moves? You're gonna have the same problem with this one as well. So not good for one-offs, because you actually do need a little bit of clamping because once again, that air is kind of escaping in different spots and you wanna maximize the air getting sucked down to that material. Now, let's go to the next pro. The next pro is gonna be fast change out times. So if done correctly, theoretically, you should be able to take this piece of material on, right, stick it on the machine, go like this, cut it out. When it's done, you turn the vacuum off, you slide off your material, right? And as you can see, you see all these little lines in here because we're putting full sheets of Bamex on here, cutting out products. And whenever it's done, we take the Bamex off, we stick another sheet on, turn on the vacuum table, everything's hold down. So instead of taking 30 minutes to get a project set up, now you're taking about 30 seconds. It's really about three minutes, but it feels like 30 seconds. So this is a great way 
to do this. And same thing on this one, right? You can stick it on here, you click go, it cuts out everything, and then you take this sheet off, stick another one on, and so your change out times go from, like I said, five, 10, 15 minutes, all the way down to 30 seconds, up to three minutes. It's amazing. The next con is that the materials must be flat, so no long boards. And this one was a big shocker to me, and I think a lot of people, they think this vacuum is like super strong vertically, and a vacuum is supposed to work horizontally most of the time, right? It's supposed to keep the ripping action from the bit. It doesn't actually have a lot of strength vertically. So whenever you have, for instance, this rough board like this, right? The vacuum table is not gonna get out this bow. I don't care if it's on my 44 horsepower vacuum, this one horsepower, 15 horsepower. It's not vacuuming down that. Once again, because that vacuum is not strong, all the air is escaping. Even if this was the only thing on that vacuum pump and I put tape all the way around it, it's not sucking this down. Okay, so then you're like, well, heck, I'm just gonna plane a board, okay? This will make it not get held down because there's a little rough spot. So it has to be perfectly flat. And so this board may actually work getting held down, but I don't know if you can see that little bit of a uh, movement to it, right? It's just a little bit warped or cupped. I don't know all the terms. That will cause it not to get held down. So my advice, if you're looking at a air weights table or you're looking at a giant CNC, don't think you can take a 10 foot board or a three foot board, lay it down, turn the vacuum on and everything's gonna get sucked down. That is a falsehood and you need to use clamps or have fixtures. Once again, about the one-offs and you know, like that point I said earlier about the one-offs and not having the T-slots, you know, that is a, it is a pretty big con because my first thoughts were like, well, heck, I'm just gonna cut some one by fours up, stick them on my CNC, it's gonna hold everything down. Now, if you do have a tiny little piece, right? If you have, you know, a little 12 inch piece or something like that, that's not gonna be a problem. That'll get held down because you can keep those 12 inch pieces flat, you can stick it on here and hold it down. But once again, it has to be flat. Now to give an example of how like flat boards work, I have this future Texas flag cutting board right here and we just wide belt sanded it so it's perfectly flat. And whenever you stick it on this vacuum table right here, watch I can move it, turn on the vacuum pump. And look, it is held down, it is not moving, okay? Watch this, I'm done with it. I then take it off and it's good. And so fast change out time, huge pro. You don't have to use clamps, great. You know, it, you'd have to set up some little measurements to make sure it's right. It moves, it's flat, it gets sucked down and you're good. So I'm not saying flat boards, like boards don't work, but if there's any cupping or any warping, it's not going to work on your vacuum table. Now the next pro is that every industrial machine or at least 99% of industrial machines have vacuum tables. Let me repeat that again. 99% of industrial machines that are meant to turn and make money have vacuum tables. So I think that is a pro worth noting because if they weren't necessarily better, they probably wouldn't have it. But most, almost every industrial machine that I have looked at or I have touched, I have felt, I have saw running have vacuum tables. Quick side note, that is pro number three, but that means they are better and they do make money because of all the reasons that I'm saying, but there is those drawbacks. The next con with vacuum tables is just simply the cost of them, right? Because you're gonna have to pay for this motor, you're gonna have to pay for a bed, if you're getting a hobbyist one, right? This little bed that has to be perfectly flat, have perfectly good veins, or if you're looking at an industrial one, you have the bed, which has to be perfectly flat, have all the grid system, have the vacuum pump in the back, right? Once again, these are identically the same, except it's just a smaller motor because it's going on a smaller machine and a bigger motor because it's on a bigger machine. But the costs are relatively the same, motor, flatbed, machining, hoses, connections, all of that good stuff. And there's other ongoing costs with these machines that you wouldn't necessarily think of. And so right here I have gasketing put down on this. And once again, guys, you wanna make sure that air does not escape. And so I put gasketing down in this little rectangle around these holes right here. And because I have that down, now it'll get held and everything, you know, will get held down. But as soon as I take off a little corner of this gasketing right here, okay? Once again, this does cost a little bit more money, but it's not that expensive. And so as soon as you take that gasketing off, It moves. Put gasketing back on. It 
get sucked down. That to me is still crazy, but that's what I keep saying. You want to trap as much air as possible, especially on like this air weight system. If there's any little bit of, of air escaping, since it's a one horsepower vacuum, you know, it's gonna lose suction pretty quick. Where this one, you can have more air escaping because you have a 15 horsepower vacuum. But at the end of the day, as you saw earlier, I could still move that product, even though I have a 15 horsepower vacuum in the back. And so when I said cost, you're probably gonna be using lots of tape and lots and lots of gasketing on your stuff. And this video, I'm not gonna go into all the different fixtures and all this different stuff. That's for another time. If you're interested in stuff like that, check out CNC Startups. It's a free community that I made where I'm teaching CNC fundamentals like bits and software and what machine you should get and how to set up stuff like this that's very technical, that doesn't work well for YouTube. It's on CNC Startups, it's a free community, it's awesome, and I hope you join, link is in the description. But there's just gonna be so many costs that's additional, but you have to factor in how much time am I saving with the easier change outs, with my replicatable, repeatable processes, etc. So now, let's go on to the next pro. So the next pro that I absolutely love and where these things start making money is the repeatability and the scalability with the use of jigs. And so like I said, you can't have one-off products, you can't have warped boards, but if you do make jigs and you have products that maybe you make 10 or 15 at a time, this is where this repeatability and scalability really, really works. So over here, even on my industrial machine, we made a jig system. Once again, gasketing, just like I showed you, gasketing, Here's where the air comes through and gets sucked in. And then we're making some piggy banks, but we'll put this on here. Well, this one's a little small, but we'll put it on here and it'll suck down this material. So even this industrial vacuum that has a 44 horsepower motor, we still have to get creative ways to find, to hold down this stuff. And so air doesn't escape. And that's through the use of jigs. That's for a whole nother video topic. But once you make those, we have a stack of jigs kind of right over there, if you can see them, that we change out for different products we're making. And so if it was a one-off, we don't take the time to make the jigs because it takes too long. But since all of our products in our industrial shop are not one-offs, then we can keep loading it and loading it and loading it. And so if you were making, let's say, I don't know, a hundred of these Texas flag cutting boards, you would poke a little, you know, put a couple pinholes and he provides pinholes on these right here. And then you'd bank up your product, you'd click go, it'd suck it down. And then once again, repeatability, easeability, fast change out easeability, it's totally a word, but fast change out times, you take it off, you stick the next one on, you click go. And so it's just amazing. That's such a huge pro. And that's when these things start paying for themselves. And so same thing here, right? Take sheet off, put sheet on, turn on vacuum, click go, use lots and lots of tapes on the edge. Back there, you can see this, there's tape back over there. There's tape here. We go through like 20 of these rolls a week in our shop, but save so much time, it's okay. So now let's go on to the next con. Before we go to the next point, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Ryan with CIC Workshop. Have you ever been creating wood products and needed a good material? You should try out BAMX one of the best materials for all CNC woodworkers. So if you're interested in cool materials, unique bits for your CNC, check out CIC Workshop today. You're gonna love it. Now, back to the video. And the next con is that these things are typically freaking loud. I mean, that is not quiet and it produces a lot of heat. And so in the summertime in my shop, we have to exhaust all that heat out. And so if you can look on my giant motor over there, we have all that heat exhausting out. And so those are other little variables. Now this air weights one, like I'm pretty sure a mouse farts louder than that, but it, you know, so this one's really, you don't really have to worry about, but on the larger industrial machines, that is something you're gonna have to look at. But once again, okay, maybe my, mice do fart louder than that, but it is, it is pretty, pretty quiet. So that is something else to be worried about, but I don't think this motor right here is gonna be warming your shop because it's relatively not that big and it doesn't make that much noise. So win here for the air weight system, not win for any other large industrial CNC system. So now let's go on to the next pro. And this pro overall is just, once you understand them, they're really easy to use. And the biggest principle that I can tell you after 10 years of pulling my hair out, I don't have much left, 
pulling my hair out and learning all this stuff is that you're trying to maximize the air that is getting to the material and minimize the air that is escaping. That is the whole basic principle because this motor has to be able to suck down that material. That big motor back there has to be able to suck down material, right? And so we use this paper right here on our industrial machines to cover up areas that we are not using. So we roll it out, we tape it down and we cover it up and we try to isolate the product we are cutting out as much as possible. Same thing on here. If you have this thing, this air weight system, same exact principle, right? You want to, if you have this spoil board right here and you want to suck down this piece of material, it's not happening because air is escaping everywhere else. And so you have to figure out a way to isolate that piece right here. I cannot stress the importance of this. And once you grasp that concept of, oh my gosh, there's air escaping. I don't need any air to escape to hold down stuff. This system is easy. That system is easy. They're just a little bit smaller and a little bit different, but the same exact vacuum type of system. So huge pro is if you understand that concept, you get vacuum tables like that. And if that's the only thing you take away from this video, that's okay. If you're getting value from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And a lot of y'all are asking the best way to support the channel. And that is joining CNC Startup or checking out CICworkshop.com where we sell awesome materials, hardwood panels, BAMX, bits, digital files, everything related to CNC. And we have a huge plan for CSE Workshop, growing that to be the material supplier for the CNC world. So if you wanna support the channel in any way, shape or form, check out our products. They are awesome. We use them every single day in the shop. Now, back to the video. Now that leads us to the con. And this is a very big con. This is the last con about vacuum systems is that if you're new to CNC, it's just something else you have to learn. And if you've never clicked go on a CNC and don't know how to click go very easily on your CNC, I would not try to undertake getting a vacuum table yet because there's gonna be a lots of pains in the butts, a lot of hair pulling that you're already gonna have while trying to learn how to operate CNC's. And obviously this one should be on my hobby CNC, but I put it in here to give you all good context. But there's just gonna be so many things you have to learn. You have to learn what tile gasketing is and how to make that work, what regular gasketing is, how to trap air, different kind of jigs and stuff that your CNC probably has to cut out to stick on your vacuum table for it to work. And so I would just, err on the side of walking before you run because there is a lot to learn here but if you already know how to click go on your cnc and want everything to be easier to be able to quickly make product and you're starting to want to kind of scale up and make multiple things and just have a really easier time vacuum tables are amazing but once again it is something else you have to learn and master and grow with just like that cnc learning curve is something that you're constantly going to be learning and fighting and growing same thing applies to here. So I hope that helps. Check out this video right here for more cool projects. And remember guys, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.